I bet you have all seen a lake before. But did you know that the Caspian Sea and the Red Sea are lakes? This might be a shock to some. So let's take a deep breath for a second. Lakes are large inland bodies of water. The Red Sea and the Caspian Sea, although they are connected to the ocean, are inland, thus categorized as a lake. All lakes are known as lacustrian systems. Two million square miles of the Earth's surface is lakes. Lakes can all be broken down into categories based on their chemical composition, productivity, and how they are formed. Let's look at this more closely. Saline type lakes can be categorized as chloride, sulfur, or carbonate lakes. Chloride lakes have high concentrations of chloride. Sulfate lakes have high concentrations of sulfates. And carbonate lakes have high concentrations of carbonates. High concentrations of these ions lead to high concentrations of salts, which form evaporite minerals like halite and gypsum. When a lake is called saline, it means that the lake has high concentrations of salts. These lakes can even contain more salt than the ocean and are often hydrologically closed. When a lake is hydrologically closed, no water is released from the lake and evaporation is high. This causes poor circulation and high concentrations of salts. Hydrologically open lakes are lakes that have a constant flow of water in and out. This allows for increased circulation. When a lake is hydrologically open, it is considered not saline, but instead known as freshwater. Most lakes on our planet are considered freshwater lakes. Freshwater is water containing less than 1,000 milligrams per liter of dissolved salt. Now, let's talk about categorization based on productivity. When productivity is low and there are few to no organisms, it is known as an oligotrophic lake. When organisms flourish and productivity is high, it is known as a eutrophic lake. Fossils and coal are most likely to be formed in eutrophic lakes, especially deep lakes. When organisms die and fall to the bottom of the lake, their bodies are not destroyed by oxygen because there is no oxygen on the floor of deep lakes. Types of fossils that can be found are those of bivalve mollusks, gastropods, ostracoids, and algae. Limestone can be formed in lakes as well. They can be distinguished apart from marine limestones by two minerals, trona and natron, which only form in inland bodies of water. Here is what natron and trona look like. Natron is on the left 
and trona is on the right. They are both evaporite minerals. Types of sediment among lakes vary based on geology of bedrock, weathering of nearby rocks, lake chemical compositions, and whether they support life or not. These sediment layers among lakes consist of biogenous, lithogenous, and hydrogenous sediment. Saline lakes are composed of almost entirely hydrogenous sediment, like the Great Salt Lake located in Utah. Hydrogenous sediment is sediment created through chemical reactions, such as sediment of gypsum and halite. In freshwater eutrophic lakes, biogenous located on the right and lithogenous located on the left are present. Biogenous sediment is sediment composed of life. Lithogenous sediment is sediment composed of broken down pre-existing rock. These weathered rocks are carried to lakes by erosion processes such as wind, rain, waves, and rivers. Lakes can be broken down into three parts. The top layer consisting of the surface is known as the epilimnion, which is the warmest part of a lake, from the surface to a depth of six meters. The middle of the lake, called the metalimnion, varies in temperature and ranges from six to 12 meters in depth. The bottom of the lake known as the hypolimnion, is the coldest and ranges from 12 meters to below. On the outer parts of lakes, we find the largest sediment, which is normally pebble-sized, but you can get bigger if a rock slide occurs or if the lake is formed by glaciers. Shores of lakes mostly consist of coarse sand and silt. Sediment in shallow lake waters is often disturbed by waves and organisms that cause turbidity, pushing larger sediment grains further into the lake. Waves in lakes are created by wind these waves can cause ripples, but they can only form in a select number of lakes because often the waves do not have enough energy to move sediment. In the deepest part of lakes, you find the finest sediment, which consists of silt and clay. In this area, you can have thin laminations of sediment due to no turbidity. Here are three types of lakes, how they are formed, and what sets them apart from others. Glacial lakes consist of large grain sizes that appear scratched and grooved from the movement of ice over them. They also tend to be darker in color. Glacier lakes form when glaciers move across the surface, creating a depression that is later filled in with water. They are often found at high elevations. Volcanic lakes are formed when volcanoes erupt and break apart, creating craters that become filled in with water. 
Volcanic lakes consist of whatever type of magma was present in the volcano and ash. Volcanic lakes are also round in shape. Lastly, landslide lakes are formed at the lowest point of slopes when a natural dam from things like landslides form, keeping water from escaping. These lakes are often spheroidal. These types of lakes can consist of lithogenous, biogenous, and hydrogenous sediment based on the area and chemicals present. In summary, lakes are very diverse, allowing for all three types of sediment to occur. The type of lake depends on the type of sediment, chemicals, and productivity present. From conglomerates and glacial lakes to limestone, siltstones, claystones, coal, fossils, and evaporates. No one lake is the same as another. This is only a pinch of information on lakes. There is so much more to learn than you could ever imagine.